So cellular respiration. The formula or the chemical reaction for cellular respiration, we take glucose in the presence of oxygen along with a lot of enzymes driving these reactions. You produce carbon dioxide and metabolic water as two products, along with the production of energy. The cellular respiration is happening in an organelle called a mitochondria. And do you remember the nickname for the mitochondria? powerhouse of the cell and it's the powerhouse because it produces this energy for every sugar or glucose molecule oxidized you get 36 to 38 ATP now when we were looking at photosynthesis there was some chemiosmotic phosphorylation some ATP production there but during the light reaction that ATP chemiosmotic ATP got used in the dark reaction so a plant cell will not use this ATP um, for energy. A plant cell has mitochondria, so it will burn its own sugar in the mitochondria, producing the energy that it needs. So how do plants make their own glucose? How do we get glucose? Or how do animals get glucose? That we eat it or we consume it. So it gets into our body, and it has to get into our cell. So I'm going to draw a picture of a cell here and of course what's this line represent cell membrane. and describe a cell membrane <laughs> yep. and here's one of these Im embedded proteins is a carrier protein and just the definition for a membrane itself we're going to be talking about membranes that have these channel proteins that allow that hydrogen ion to rush through and phosphorylate in ADP making ATP so out here in the outside the cell is your glucose is there because you ate it and it gets absorbed in the body goes in the bloodstream and it's out here in the tissue it's got to get into the cell and it gets in the cell by facilitated diffusion a carrier protein grabs the glucose and flips it into the cell and if you just remember the law of diffusion <coughs> that going from an area of high concentration to a low concentration facilitated diffusion it drives that way now as soon as glucose would get in high concentration inside the cell it would just go the reverse way so instead of it going the reverse way it's got to be trapped in there and it does that by using some ATP right away the glucose molecule will get phosphorylated twice <laughs> I'm just drawing a phosphate group on there and that holds it into the cell this phosphorylation is the beginning of a process called glycolysis and through this whole thing I'm going to show or explain how the 36 to 38 ATP are being made when we oxidize this one glucose molecule so the first steps of glycolysis and glycolysis means the splitting of glucose so that glucose molecule needs to be split before it can be broken down into the energy so we've phosphorylized or added a phosphate groups to these this glucose molecule and now it's trapped in there but now we need to split it and during this split you end up with two three carbon compounds so I'm just going to show uh, two three carbon compounds you see if you take this six carbon compound and cut it in half you've got two three carbon compounds so we phosphorylated it have you seen any ATP being used or made no you've seen it being used so we're using some energy before we can actually make the energy but we got to trap that glucose in there so now we've got this prep um, these actually are PGAL where is that familiar from light yeah and the light independent or the dark reaction wasn't that the three uh, three carbon compound that 
was the product of the C3 cycle. Put two of those together, you get glucose. So when you first split glucose during cellular respiration, you're back to the PGAL. This now is going to be, you're going to have some oxidation reduction reactions going on. And eventually another three carbon compound made from each of those called pyruvate. Both of them are called pyruvate or pyruvic acid. But during this metabolic, and we're talking a series of six, eight reactions, during this metabolic pathway, you've got some ATP being made. So ADP gets a phosphate group added to it, making ATP for both of them. Both of these lines going down. Have you seen any oxygen being used? Have you seen any hydrogen ion channels driving the reaction? No. no. So this is our first example of the substrate level phosphorylation. So we just saw that substrate level phosphorylation. It is an anaerobic process. Glycolysis is happening in the cytoplasm. It's an anaerobic process. It doesn't need oxygen to occur. So this end product, pyruvate, besides our ATPs, this happens again. And if you follow along in a textbook, you'll see this many series of reactions occurring. And there's also another thing being made here. Nicotine uh, adenine dinucleotide, the NAD, gets reduced down to NADH. So we got a lot of stuff being made here going from this original glucose down to here, the pyruvate. But that's quite a mess right there, so I'm going to erase it. And we're just going to list it over here. So during glycolysis, you have, we had to use two ATP here, remember, right here? So we had to use ATP. So that's not going to be in our count. So down here we had four ATP made by substrate level phosphorylation totally. So if we use two here and we have four here, what is the net total of our ATP made by substrate level? Two. Two. Yeah. Wouldn't you love to have your gross pay versus your net pay? But we got, we used two, we made four, we only have two net substrate level phosphorylation, but then we also had two of these NADHs made. We got to keep track of these because eventually in the mitochondria those are going to be worth a lot of ATP. So now we're down here to pyruvate. If there's oxygen present, this will continue into this total cellular respiration, the total oxidation of a glucose molecule, which I'm going to do right now. If there's no oxygen present, I'm going to talk about a fermentation process that occurs here in the cytoplasm. So let me erase this mess. Just remember that happened. So we've got our C3 compounds. There's two of them there, and that's pyruvate also called pyruvic acid. So I'm really going to exaggerate this mitochondria because really it's only that big. But if I drew a bunch of stuff in there, you won't be able to see it. So drawing my mitochondria, it's got that inner membrane with its folds called the cristae. On those folds are these embedded proteins, part of the electron transport system or the electron transport chain. The ETS or the ETC, electron transport chain, electron transport system, they mean the same thing. That's this. And then we've got a channel protein that's going to allow for the hydrogen ions to rush through.